Today in this video, we are going to study about skeletal muscle contraction. We will begin the video with a simple animation which will explain the process in a very simple manner. Muscle contraction is triggered by a set of events called cross breath cycle. The functional unit of contraction is the sarcomere. Sarcomere shortens when myosin head and thick myofilaments form cross bridges with the actin and thin myofilaments. The formation of cross bridge initiates when calcium released from sarcoplasmic reticulum binds to the troponin. This causes troponin to change its shape. Tropomyosin moves away from the myosin binding site on actin allowing the myosin head to bind to actin and form a cross bridge. Also note that myosin head should be activated before the cross bridge cycle begins. This occurs when ATP binds to myosin head and hydrolyzes to ADP and inorganic phosphate. The energy liberated from hydrolysis of ATP activates the myosin head, forcing it into the cocked position. A cross breath cycle may be divided into four steps. Step 1 Cross bridge formation. The activated myosin head binds to actin, forming a cross bridge. Inorganic phosphate is released and bond between actin and myosin becomes strong. Step 2. The power stroke. ADP is released and activated myosin head pivots, sliding thin myofilament to center of sarcomere. Step 3. Cross bridge detachment. When another ATP binds to myosin head, the bond between actin and myosin weakens and myosin head detaches. Step 4. Reactivation of myosin head. ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. The energy released reactivates the myosin head bringing it back to its cocked position. As long as the binding site on actin remains exposed, cross breath cycle continues. As the cycle repeats, thin filaments are pulled and sarcomere shortens. It ends when calcium ions are actively transported back to sarcoplasmic reticulum. Troponin returns back to its original shape and allows tropomyosin to glide, glide back over the myosin binding site on actin. Now we'll see the sequence of events during muscle contraction and relaxation when stimulated by a nerve. In order for a skeletal muscle contraction to occur, there must be a neural stimulus. There must be calcium in the muscle cells and ATP must be available for the energy. For a contraction to occur, there must first be a stimulation of the muscle in the form of an impulse. The motor neuron does not stimulate the entire muscle but only a number of muscle fibers within a muscle. The individual motor neuron plus the muscle fiber it stimulates is called a motor unit. Now, we are going to see a flow chart which will give us a very simple explanation of how the procedure occurs. First of all, we have the nerve excitation. There is stimulation of motor neuron. There is initiation of action potential in the motor neuron's axon. Then we have the nerve conduction. In nerve conduction, there is propagation of action potential in the motor nerve. This is followed by impulse reaching at nerve ending, that is at synaptic button. Then we have the neuromuscular transmission. 
there is increased permeability of presynaptic membrane to the calcium ions. There is inflow of calcium ions from extracellular fluid into the nerve terminals. There is release of acetylcholine from the microvesicles present at the nerve terminals. Then there is diffusion of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Binding of acetylcholine to the receptors on the motor end plate that is postsynaptic membrane. Opening of acetylcholine gated channels in motor end plate membrane. This entry of sodium ions and to a lesser extent of the calcium ions through these channels into the muscle fiber. And there is development of end plate potential. Then we have the muscle excitation. The local end plate potential when reaches a threshold magnitude, voltage gated sodium channels are opened at this site. This generation of action potential in the muscle fibers by end plate depolarization. The propagation of action potential in muscle fiber along the surface and into the fiber along the T-tubules. Then we have the excitation contraction coupling. In this, there is release of calcium ions from the terminal cistern. There is diffusion of calcium into the sarcoplasm. There is binding of calcium ions to the troponin C. Then we have the muscle contraction molecular theory in which there is uncovering of the binding sites for myosin on the actin. There is cross bridge formation between myosin head and actin. Angular movement of cross bridge that is the par stroke. The sliding of thin filaments over thick filaments which causes the shortening of the sarcomere and initiation of muscle contraction. Then we have the muscle relaxation at the end. That is the, actively tra the active transport of this calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The decreased this decreased concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasm and so there is removal of calcium from the troponin C. This causes the returning of troponin back to its original position. Tropomyosin again covers the active binding site of myosin on actin and there is relaxation of the muscle fiber. Thank you. If you like the video, do not forget to turn the black thumb blue and subscribe the channel.